Let's talk about Blake 7. Oh, How, yes, let's talk about Blake 7. Indeed, let's. How did that series come about? I went to the BBC and said I have what I think is a terrific idea. It's the Dirty Dozen in space. And they quite quickly said, yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't you do it? And I got home and got a call then from Ronnie Marsh, who was the guy in charge there. He said, yeah, we'll go with that series, but you must write all first, the first 13. You write all of them. And I blandly said, yes, uh, not actually figuring this 13 hours there. And indeed we did. I, I wrote the first 13. Um, but the idea came from me. The, I, I wanted to sort of think of Robin Hood in space uh, because he was a bandit. Uh, but the, the better idea, the, the, the dirty dozen in space, seemed a clearer, clearer picture of what I wanted. Did you have any idea that that program was going to develop the sort of cult following that we're beginning to see? No. I, I thought it would be successful. I thought it would work as a show. And I thought we'd run, run some, some years on it. But no, I didn't believe it would, would build up the cult following, and that's, that's very, very rewarding nice. One of the things that sets Blake 7 apart from so many other science fiction um, programs and movies that we've seen in recent years is the lack of reliance on special effects. Uh -huh. was, was this something intentional on your part? Oh, to a great extent. One has to be aware that with the budget we were given, which was around about $2.50, I think, um, that we're not going to get great special effects. And, um, George Lucas had already screwed us up with all of those <laughs> wonderful things he was doing. So we had to, we had some special effects, a um, few things, but a special effect for us was a guy shaking the piece of scenery. I mean, that's the earthquake. Uh, um, and we decided right from the off that we wanted to concentrate much more on the character and the relationships between those characters. And that, I think, worked marvelously well. Of course, it's those characters that really make Blake 7 what it is. Did you have any idea how these characters would be portrayed? Yeah, I had, I had the bare bones, and I've always claimed that I gave the actors a blueprint, a, a kind of real skeletal feeling for the, for the character, and then asked them to give me more. Now, the moment they did, I would be able to take that and, and add it to the character, and the characters built that way it was. It was a trade-off all the time. Uh, for instance, Paul Darrow, who plays Avon, was wonderful at this. He took hold of really what was a nothing part. I knew that the character was an icy, uh, technically I begin to do. He can actually, he can show you how it's done in fact, uh, and became colder and colder and more logical and more ruthless and, and so you finally, nobody could find out who was in there. Was there a nice guy under that cold one? Uh, he, so they, yes, they, they all developed. They gave me a lot of help. I'm banking on them searching outwards, not inwards. And if you're wrong? If I'm wrong, you can say I told you so, provided you speak loudly and quickly. One of the things that I think sets Blake 7 apart from other series is the heroes are fallible. Um, we see them doing very human things, sometimes making mistakes, sometimes doing things that aren't very nice to each other. Uh, did you have any concerns that the public might not accept this sort of hero? No, I thought that the, the public were absolutely crying out for a little of reality in, in their lives. The superheroes, once again, I'm going back to the same thing as I said about Doctor Who. If you are a Superman, then there's no surprise at the end of the show that you're still the Superman. If you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, hey, you know, you're terrific. Uh, I wanted my people to be vulnerable. I wanted them to feel danger, to be frightened, to be, I guess, like I would be. I'd be scared out there. And so I wanted them to make, make mistakes and, and, and be real. And you also had computers that were characters, Zen and Horak. Uh -huh, that's right. Uh, what, what element do you think the computers brought to the series? Well, the first one, uh, which was Zen, the first that was actually built into the ship, I think gave them certain pieces of knowledge that I was not able to get to them otherwise to make my stories work. So it was a functionary piece. But because we had such a good actor, he made Zen into a very attractive voice character. Uh, Orak, I thought one, I wanted something different. And we met his maker, who was a nasty, irascible man, and so the computer was a nasty, irascible computer. Sort of a chip off the old block. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Again, in his maker's image. <laughs> well, what about the women in Blake 7? Um, yeah. They, <laughs> 
they're beautiful, number one. Uh, number two, they're all portrayed as very strong, take charge sort mm -hmm. of sort of people, um, which I, I think is very good. Uh, what was this the result of a conscious effort on your part to make the women strong characters? No. Uh, once again, I, I write quite well for women. I didn't write quite well for our, our ladies there because they're. Well, I'll come back to that in a moment. I did a series called Survivors in England, which is about a group of people after a devastating disease virtually wipes out the earth. The leader in that was a woman. And it's, it's fascinating to me to, to use women. And I don't write them very differently. You see, I don't, I don't think, hey, that's a woman. I think this is a person again. This is a real character, a real lady. Um, so I, no, I, I like that. I mean, we have Servalam, the wonderful villainous of the piece. I mean, she's a very powerful lady. That could be played by a man. But she played it with much, and she's prettier. Um, <laughs> what else? Um, I didn't write well enough for them. I couldn't give them enough to do, the girls in our show. And they were strong, they were pretty, but I wasn't able to, they, they were better actresses than I ever allowed them to be. One thing that doesn't quite ring true about the series with me is here you have these healthy men and beautiful women flying around on the Liberator, and there's never any romantic relationships. You don't know what goes on in the back <laughs> rooms down there. I, um, but there were hints. There were hints. And certainly there was, there was a hint of, of some sort of relationship between Avon and Servalam. But only a hint. Well... Well, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not making porno movies, we're making good <laughs> science fiction movies. And, uh, and I've got to tell you that a lot of the fans have written uh, short stories and scripts, and they, they seem to cover that aspect of it very well. The, there's a, a lot of sex uh, Blake 7 fan mail about it. So we'll have a little Blake Jr. one of these days? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most unusual aspects of the Blake 7 series is it continued without Blake. Yes, that's not amazing. What happened? <laughs> uh, well, the truth of the matter is that Gareth wanted uh, contractual changes that my producer could not go along with. And so you've got to turn those defeats into victories. And I thought instantly, hey, that's terrific. We will now spend the next season looking for Blake, which we proceeded to do. And we went on searching, and, and we could do a story looking for Blake, and then a story not looking for Blake. And so it worked, it worked very well. But uh, Gareth was now, there was a new leader. There were new people. They just started, that wouldn't have, we couldn't have done it had it ended on, on the, at the end of uh, series one. But by that time, there were other people who could back him up and support him, and, and, and uh, we could live without him by that time. Of course, many fans are very unhappy with the way the series ended, with the shootout where everybody was killed, or were they really? Um, that leads to the obvious question, is there going to be more Blake 7 episodes in the future? Uh, the, the, Beeb, the BBC don't take me into their plans uh, too much. I, I really hope so. I think if, if I were up there and a planner, I would be looking at the success the show's had in this country and the, show, the success it had in Britain and say, yeah, that's just too good to let it die. Let's, let's do some more of them. And if that happens, despite that last episode, I know where it goes on from. I, I know the next part. Give us a hint. They all come out of the shower and it's been a terrible dream. No, 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 no. No, I can't. I think that's been done uh, before. I think it has. No, but I, I do know, I know how I'd like... I, in fact, I'd really very much like... I would enjoy writing it very much. Is there anything the fans could do to help bring that about? I think they, they do wonderful things. I think if they continue to insist that, that public television plays it and that they see it all the time and continue to make themselves heard, uh, who knows what will stir the hearts and minds of BBC, but I would think that their letters are the only way you're going to make that kind of communication felt, and, and uh, I'd be grateful for that. Well, we know it's certainly a very popular series in this country. If it were to come back, what do you think the possibility is that we would see the same cast, same characters? You would see some of the same cast, certainly. Uh, I know who survived that massacre, and I'm really not going to tell you, so <laughs> don't, don't, don't press me on it. I know who survived the massacre. There would be some changes, certainly, but there would also be some of the old principles there as well. Um, 
Of that, no more. And that's, uh, I'm not going to talk about that part of it. Well, I see we're just about out of time. Terry Nation, thank you for being with us, and thank you for your many wonderful scripts. Thank you. Whovians don't go away. Coming up next is The Caves of Androzani, the last Doctor Who miniseries featuring Peter Davison, the fifth Doctor. Also, coming up momentarily, we'll have another look at those extremely cool Doctor Who thank you gifts available tonight if you become a member of Channel 54.